Tomo News presents The Path to Mars. NASA postpones flying saucer test due to winds in Hawaii. NASA was forced to cancel six attempted launches of a saucer shaped Mars landing test vehicle in early June because of unusually strong winds at the Hawaiian test site. Landing heavier spacecraft on Mars presents a challenge, as Mars's atmosphere is around 100 times thinner than Earth, meaning that it cannot provide sufficient resistance to slow down a spacecraft for a safe landing. To combat the problem, NASA has developed a low density supersonic decelerator. A 3,048 kilogram flight vehicle, which has the potential to overcome the obstacles of a Martian landing. The first step of the test requires launching the vehicle using a helium balloon, which will take the lander up to an altitude of 36,600 meters. The balloon will then detach from the craft, which will continue its ascent by igniting solid fuel engines. When the vehicle reaches 54,800 meters, it will be traveling at a maximum speed of Mark 4. As it slows down from Mark 4 to Mark 3.8, it will deploy a device called a supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator, which looks like an inflatable hula hoop, to further reduce its speed from Mark 3.8 to Mark 2.5. A parachute will then be deployed to further reduce the flight vehicle's velocity on its journey back to Earth. The vehicle will then be recovered from the Pacific Ocean off Hawaii. The test is now rescheduled for late June. NASA's laser-powered spacecraft aims to reach Mars in 72 hours. NASA scientist Philip Lubin is working on perfecting laser technology that could propel a light spacecraft to Mars in as little as three days. Photons emitted from excited atoms in a laser have energy and momentum, which forms the basis of laser-based propulsion. Photons are released in a beam from a laser. When photons from a laser array reflect off an object, their energy is translated into a push that's capable of moving objects like a spacecraft. Rather than using a giant laser a la the Death Stars, researchers imagine an array made up of a large number of amplifiers that sync up and act like one big laser. The spacecraft launched with this technology will include a robotic probe and a large reflective sail. The spacecraft will be light because no fuel is needed. And this spacecraft could be accelerated to 30% the speed of light, which was previously unheard of. This technology could produce enough momentum to get a robotic spacecraft to Mars in three days and send a manned shuttle to Mars in a month. Using photonic propulsion, interstellar travel may be possible, and we could get a probe to Earth's nearest star, Alpha Centauri, in as little as 15 years. In comparison, our current technology takes four to eight months to get to Mars. It took 37 years for the Voyager 1 spacecraft to reach the edge of our solar system. NASA developing inflatable heat shield that could be used for manned missions to Mars. NASA is developing an inflatable heat shield that could one day be used to send astronauts to Mars. Designed by NASA's Langley Research Center, the inflatable shield could help overcome the difficulties of landing on the Red Planet, where the atmosphere is too thin for modern rockets or parachutes to safely land large spacecraft. The heat shield was inspired by the idea of a stacking ring of toy donuts. Inside the heat shield are inflatable segments covered in thermal blankets. Upon entering the Martian atmosphere, the rings would be inflated with nitrogen. And the heat shield would slow the descent of the spacecraft in an atmosphere that is 100 times thinner than that of the Earth's. NASA plans to test the technology on the next flight of the Antares rocket in 2016. Because the heat shield is inflatable and lightweight, it would free up more room inside a spacecraft. It could also allow for spacecraft large enough to carry humans to land safely on Mars, unlike current heat shields which can only land rovers. The same inflatable technology could also one day be used to help spacecraft land on other planets and moons in the solar system, like Venus and Titan. NASA-funded scientists say fusion rocket engines could take a manned crew to Mars in 30 to 90 days. The fusion rocket pulses at a rate of one blast per minute, causing exhaust to exit the divergent magnetic nozzle at 30 kilometers per second. 
solar energy will provide electricity needed to charge the capacitors, which then power the fusion rocket's magnets. For each pulse of the rocket engine, powerful magnets crush a series of lithium metal rings around a ball of tritium deuterium plasma. An exothermic reaction occurs, providing thrust. The fusion rocket engine will only be active for 10% of the voyage, half of the time to speed away from the Earth and the other half to slow down upon arrival near Mars. Unlike a conventional chemical rocket, the fusion rocket's lithium fuel takes up only 50% of its mass, compared to 98% for a liquid fuel Saturn V rocket. The fusion rocket should also be more cost-effective than a chemical rocket, whose primary cost was transporting fuel to space. SpaceWorks believes the key to space travel may be artificially induced sleep. A NASA-funded study written by aerospace engineering company SpaceWorks says that keeping astronauts unconscious during long flights in space cuts down the equipment and resources needed on the shuttle and also eliminates the negative psychological effects of long hauls in space. According to the NASA-funded study on cryogenic sleep, a human body can be placed in hibernation by simply lowering the body temperature to 93 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowered body temperature causes the body's heart rate and metabolism to decrease. The body will subsist on intravenous feeding tubes that pump the necessary nutrients into the body. Other tubes will drain urine as well as monitor the body. According to mock-ups, a torpor status habitat can hold six astronauts at once and robotic arms will ensure everyone's basic needs are met. So far, humans are only able to maintain stasis for 14 days, although the trip from Earth to Mars is expected to take up to nine months, or about 274 days. NASA has declined to fund the second stage of the research, though, and SpaceWorks, citing its potential therapeutic benefits, is now looking into using the technology here on Earth. U.S. space agency NASA will have to find creative solutions to overcoming the hazards of space radiation for future manned missions to Mars. Radiation readings from the Curiosity rover on Route 2 and while on Mars revealed levels dangerous to humans. Exposure to solar radiation would be highest during the 180 to 253 day journey to the Red Planet. Current spacecraft radiation shielding is insufficient for such long journeys. Walls filled with hydrogen rich water offer one solution. Electromagnetic shields could provide even more protection. Astronauts would need this protection to survive the mission. An average CT scan gives a dose of around 10 millisieverts, whereas a round trip to Mars would expose a human to 554 to 770 millisieverts of radiation. Excessive exposure to radiation can cause cataracts, cancer of the thyroid glands, lungs, stomach and sterility. NASA aims to send humans to Mars sometime in the 2030s. NASA prepares to roll out Orion spacecraft. NASA is entering the final stages of preparation for testing its new Orion spacecraft. The U.S. Space Agency NASA launched space shuttles 134 times from 1981 to 2011, but budget costs forced the program's retirement. But NASA says it's almost ready to launch a new space vehicle, one that borrows extensively from the Apollo program that sent humans to the moon in 1969. The new Orion spacecraft will have a range of updated features for 21st century space exploration and is capable of remaining in space for about six months. The Orion will also be roomier with a larger crew and service module. The launch escape system has also been updated. In the event of trouble on the launch pad or during launch, a smaller rocket will propel the crew module away from the main rocket, deploy parachutes and land safely. NASA plans a late 2014 test of the entire system that will see Orion fly 15 times farther into space than the International Space Station before returning to Earth at speeds of more than 30,000 kilometers per hour and splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. With the Orion, NASA is taking a back-to-the-future approach by updating technologies that are decades old but have proven themselves to be cost-effective and reliable. NASA to send Orion spacecraft on unmanned flight test. The Orion spacecraft, which is designed to carry astronauts to Mars, will undergo an unmanned flight test in early December. An Orion capsule will be launched into space on a Delta IV rocket from Cape Canaveral on December 4th. The lower stage and the launch abort system will separate from the upper stage. Orion will orbit twice around the Earth, 
When it reaches an altitude of 5,800 kilometers, it will be 15 times higher above the planet than the International Space Station. Orion's upper stage will then separate and its crew module will return to Earth. Its heat shield is designed to ensure it will be able to withstand temperatures of almost 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit during re-entry. When the spacecraft returns to the atmosphere, parachutes will deploy in different stages to slow its descent. Scientists will retrieve the capsule after it falls into the ocean. NASA has allocated $375 million for the first test flight. In subsequent tests, the Orion will be mounted on a new rocket named the Space Launch System. NASA's Orion spacecraft prepares for first test launch. The capsule that will bring humans one step closer to setting foot on Mars is slated to make its first flight in 2018. Five months ago, NASA technicians began the first assembly weld on the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, or MPCV, spacecraft. The Orion's pressure vessel, the part filled with air for astronauts, started out in seven pieces. Those pieces were fused together by mid-January. The pressure vessel was then transported from the Michaud Assembly Facility in Louisiana to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It traveled on a Super Guppy cargo aircraft equipped with a compartment that is 25 feet tall, 25 feet wide, and 111 feet long, and it arrived on February 1st. At the Kennedy Space Center, the Orion will be equipped with subsystems, outer layers, and a heat shield, everything it needs to complete its first mission, which NASA has announced will be an unmanned test flight to the moon in 2018 to check its structural integrity. The little guy is already being heralded America's next great leap in space exploration. That's a lot of pressure for your first assignment, but you got this, Orion. NASA confirms existence of liquid water flowing on Mars. NASA has confirmed that there is liquid water flowing on Mars, which is a potential breakthrough in the quest to search for life beyond Earth. According to NASA scientists, liquid water runs down canyons and crater walls on Mars, leaving dark stains in the terrain. These stains, known as the Recurring Slope Lineae, or RSL, occur when temperatures rise above minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. The stains disappear during the cold season. Scientists discovered perchlorate salts on Mars's surface by looking at infrared light waves reflected from the RSL. The salt is crucial in keeping water in liquid form by lowering the freezing point of water. One possible theory of the origin of the flow of water is deliquescence, a process where salt absorbs water from the air. It remains to be seen whether this discovery will prove that life exists on Mars. NASA researchers will now focus on where the water comes from. The Curiosity rover sends back photos showing evidence that there may have been a lake on Mars. NASA's Curiosity rover has sent home photos showing evidence of water currents and sediments on Mars. NASA says this implies the planet may have maintained a climate that could have produced long-lasting lakes. NASA's Curiosity rover has been taking photos of the lowest sedimentary layers at Mount Sharp, a section of rock 500 feet tall inside the 96-mile-wide Gale Crater. The photos show signs of water currents and sediments on rocks inside the crater. NASA says this implies Mars may have been able to support long-lasting lakes that could have supported microbial life for millions of years. Scientists speculate that in the ancient past, runoff from the crater rim could have created a lake in which sediment gradually settled and built up to form Mount Sharp. NASA has long speculated that Mars once held water. NASA previously theorized that gravel-like rocks found on Mars could have been smoothed by water and pushed into the shape of an alluvial fan. The longest-running Mars rover, Opportunity, has covered a record-breaking 22 miles as it approached its 10th year on the Red Planet. NASA Mars rover Opportunity launched from Cape Canaveral on July 7, 2003. After traveling 283 million miles through space over seven months, Opportunity Dash landed on Mars on January 25, 2004. The rover rolled to a stop in Eagle's Crater. Opportunity was designed for a 90-day mission to search for evidence of liquid water that may have supported life forms on Mars. Within weeks, the rover found mineral crystallizations left behind by the passage of water. Ten years later, Opportunity is still collecting data on Mars. 
The rover runs on solar power and uses a panoramic camera for navigation. Collected data is sent back to Earth via low and high gain antennas. Opportunity is equipped with a microscopic imager and spectrometer to study Mars's surface geology. The rover takes pictures of Mars's terrain and calculates the best route for traversing the planet's rocky surface. It has endured a sand trap and a sunless dust storm. It continues to run on a damaged right front wheel. Currently, Opportunity is heading to Solander Point, where tens of meters of geological layering are exposed for analysis. In May, Opportunity broke the US record for the greatest total mileage covered on a surface apart from Earth. It is expected to surpass the world record held by the Soviet Lunacod 2 lunar rover. Opportunity's sister rover, Spirit, stopped running on Mars in 2011. NASA's Mars Science Exploration Laboratory rover Curiosity landed on the planet in August 2012 and has since been exploring the Gale Crater area. Mad scientist Elon Musk wants to nuke Mars. Stephen Colbert recently compared Elon Musk to a real-life Tony Stark during an interview in which the entrepreneur set out his vision to make Mars habitable. Now how exactly would this mad scientist make this foreign land habitable? Good old American way! Bombs. Terraforming is the hypothetical process of altering a planet's environment to make it livable. Tesla CEO Elon Musk recently floated the idea that Mars could be terraformed through nuclear strikes to destroy its polar ice caps. The average temperature on Mars is similar to Antarctica in winter. Destroying the poles may warm the planet but scientists told the Los Angeles Times this may not warm Mars enough and could lead to unknown changes in its terrain. Naturally, Twitter had something to say. User James Royce asked, Can Musk get any cooler? While Jackalope asked, Why does Musk want to nuke Mars? Another slower method Musk suggested would be heating the planet through greenhouse gases, but this also faces problems, as Mars' current levels of carbon dioxide are potentially suitable for plants but poisonous to animals. What do you think of Musk's ideas? Are they science fiction? Or do you think he may actually have a point? The European Space Agency is launching a test run on February 11 of its new reusable spacecraft. This mission is unique as ESA's unmanned experimental spaceship will maneuver itself back through Earth's atmosphere. The Vega rocket, containing ESA's Intermediate Experimental Vehicle, or IXV, will launch from Kourou, French Guiana on Wednesday. The rocket will open its two-piece shell at an altitude of 320 kilometers and release the IXV. The IXV's 300 sensors will collect various data throughout the spacecraft's 100-minute mission. Rocket thrusters and flaps will control IXV's descent back to Earth, and its sensors will continue to calculate data throughout the re-entry process. The spacecraft will deploy parachutes in order to slow itself down before landing. Balloons released from the side of the spacecraft will keep the IXV afloat until it's recovered. The IXV is ESA's first step towards creating reusable spacecrafts that may one day return from missions to Mars or shuttle astronauts back from space stations. The Indian Space Research Organization has announced the launch date for its most ambitious project yet, the Mars Orbiter Mission. India's Mangalyaan satellite has moved from its testing center in Bangalore to Sri Harikota on the east coast, where it will launch on October 28th. The spacecraft will orbit Earth for several weeks before beginning its 10-month, 400-million-kilometer journey to the Red Planet under its own propulsion. When it reaches Mars's orbit, the Mangalyaan will separate from its rocket and deploy its solar panel. The satellite's elliptical orbit will take it 372 kilometers from Mars at its closest point and 80,000 kilometers at its farthest. Its 15-kilogram payload includes a methane sensor to study the evolution of the planet's atmosphere, a camera for detailed photographs of the surface, and a thermal infrared spectrometer to gather mineral composition data. The $83 million Mars Orbiter mission is the country's boldest step in the global space race. The program's last project five years ago found evidence of water on the moon.